Quick, come here. I don't want to waste time here because there's a story that I can't wait to tell you. Just got a real, just really quick, I'm just gonna plug in the thing, and then I guess I just, from there, I'm just gonna tell the story. All right, and here we go. It's a story about something I've loved for as long as I can remember, and it's also a story about something I've come to love equally as much, and sometimes even more. I'm good at snowboarding. I'm not the greatest ever, but I love it a lot. It's easy for me to love because many times in my life, I've been lucky enough to experience the feeling. Now, I always thought the feeling was rare. I most often experienced it in super deep snow when I was one with the board. But more people ski and snowboard now than ever before, which I think is great. Everyone should get a chance to feel the feeling. But because of this, ski resorts do feel more like resorts with restaurants and spas. For a while, I thought skied out runs and longer lines made the feeling more rare. But I kept looking. And somehow it felt like the harder I looked, the more elusive it became. Now it feels like I'm giving away some crazy insider information to say I have found a way to feel it so much more consistently. And the way I found it was through POW surfing. This is something that's been around since the origin of snowboarding itself, but there's a really good reason for the fact that in the last couple years, it has completely exploded. But before I try and explain that reason, let me address the one person out there that's like, but Schaefer, I just gotta ask, what is POW surfing? I'm glad you asked. Basically, you take a normal snowboard, chop off the bindings, shape it more like a surfboard, then smack a leash on that baddie so you don't lose it when you fall. And now our tiny dancers out there thinking, but how do you turn? Well, I'm glad you asked. The answer basically boils down to deep snow. Unlike a snowboard, you can't use your toes and heels to dig an edge into the more low tide, icy snow. Therefore, you need conditions that are deep enough that you can kind of lean your body weight into. Snow like this is not easy to find, so it takes a little bit of initiative and research. This process has taught me a lot of patience because even if you check every box and do all your homework, anything can happen. For example, the time some friends and I went to a spot that has worked before, but on this day there was so much snow that you couldn't even get started. Come on. Okay, maybe I started a little early. Okay. Now we're moving. Now we're not. Gail, how experienced are you at snow surfing? This is my second time. I don't know which way I usually face. Oh, that's probably a good thing to put. All right, bye. Bye. <laughs> Mostly it just makes you sick as f and gets you like tons of like uh, brownie points with like social media. Everyone else is doing it and that's just the fast track to getting hella sponsors, so. <laughs> like is maybe not like the perfect word, more uh, required, it's in the contract. Gotta get the footage to my sponsors. <laughs> we, need, we need more light on camera B. Stack. Don't even worry about it. It's full HD, you'll look great. Come on, I'm burning film here. Go do it, Gail. Do the thing. Quicker. <laughs> Go. Cinematography. No, oh, redo the strap. That didn't look good on the B-roll. That's a key part of your edit. No one's gonna sponsor you without freaking tight leash B-roll. Go, faster. Faster, turn, throw up some snow. Not like that. I don't know if I like it or not. I don't really know what I'm doing here. Does that answer your question? When you're on a snowboard, you're just like so locked in to your bindings. And that's, I just see that as like a great analogy to life. Like you're just so locked down by all your responsibilities and all the stuff you have to do and then get on a POW surfboard and there's no bindings. And everyone knows, no bindings, no rules. I'm having so much fun. <laughs> and that's what it's all about. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> yeah, so I changed my answer. I'm here to be sponsored, clearly. Now you might think all this talk about sponsors is just fun and games, and it definitely is. But also, I was sent this board to make this video and I kind of felt like I owed them some better footage than what I'd gotten so far. 
So even though I had an absolute blast with Luke and Gail, I realized for the footage, it was time to call in the big guns. So when it comes to pal surfing, there's this one, I guess you could call it tool in particular, that makes the whole experience exponentially more fun. And I don't have one because it's not the most accessible tool, it's a little bit expensive. But my buddy Eric has one, so I'm waiting for him to come pick me up and then we're gonna go have the best day of pal surfing ever. He just got here, look at this guy. Dude, you may be the coolest person I've ever met. <laughs> I don't have trailer lights or anything. <laughs> this is so sick. We got to the trailhead and saw a big evil monster snow truck that was incredibly cool. And of course, the only thing I could think to say was, that's what we need, dude. <laughs> but in reality, what I needed more than a big giant evil snow monster truck was warmer clothes. Dude, what temperature is it out here right now? <laughs> It is negative eight in my house and everything is frozen. It's warm, warm day. It was at this moment I realized for the rest of the day I was gonna be in Edmund from the Chronicles of Narnia. But even so, we strapped our boards to the sled and set off towards Mr. Tumnus and the magical furniture store, whatever that movie's about. I'm gonna try and set a sled track so that it's easier for us to go up because this will compact a nice track. So basically I'm gonna send it up the hill in as straight a line as possible, try not to get stuck, and then turn around, get back in the track, and send it back down the same thing I came up so that we have something nice to walk up. Dude, if I'm Edmund, Eric was the white witch because he worked some magic on that sled track. The hike up was no problem. And the ride down, well, the ride down was awesome. Pow surfing is really special. It's hard to put into exact words, but like I mentioned earlier, there's a reason it's blowing up more than ever right now. And personally, for me, that reason is because there's no gimmicks. You don't need to supplement it with a fancy restaurant and a spa. It's just people with boards in the snow. I like it a lot because it's like the opposite of skiing. Like, when I'm skiing, I try and every time, trying to like hit a line faster, hit an air bigger, cleaner, or whatever. But with power surfing, you just find a, a hill or a landfill or whatever, and you just hang out and ride, and it's super mellow. And it's a very nice change of pace. You, just, you got nothing else in your mind. You're just like, holy cow. All I can think about is how to make this next turn and what to do with my body so that I survive that turn and then link it into a next one and holy cow, this board is somehow throwing powder into my face and everything is magical. I will love snowboarding till the day I die. It's gonna continue to be a huge part of my life and I will never take a day of it for granted. But if nothing else, I'm grateful for my experience with powder surfing because it's reminded me that that feeling is simple. Deep snow is great, being one with the board is amazing, but at the end of the day, the feeling is just being outside in the snow with my friends while I still can. I could probably go off about how there's so much more float and to engage a turn you need to lean so much more so it feels like you're actually surfing but that would kind of all just be white noise because the truth is it's just the easiest way to get sponsored now. <laughs> so 
it kind of got to do what you got to do. Yeah, it actually sucks. <laughs> yeah, 